it's Dr. Joe DeMarco, chiropractor and owner of Oak Med Health. Are you having knee pain? Is it affecting your ability to go into the gym and do squats, lunges? Maybe you're just having knee pain when you're walking down stairs. Today's video, we're gonna go over how to fix that, okay? Before we do, a couple of things, a couple of announcements. One, if you haven't um, done so already, check it out. I have a new Facebook page called Bring On 60. I have the link right below this video. Bring On 60 is a new Facebook page based off of my new weekly series that we've been doing called Bring On 60, which follows my journey this year as I turn 60 years old. And so I've set up a Facebook page. So check it out. Every day I try to post information for adults on, on how to stay healthy and fit. So I, I, I think it's some interesting material for any adults out there. So anyways, I hope you check it out and I hope you join our Facebook page. If you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it. Take a moment right now, subscribe to my channel, Okra Med Health on YouTube. Click that little bell notification. It notifies you every time I upload a new video. And at the end of today's video, if you find the information helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. So we're talking about knee pain today, and we're gonna focus in on the muscle known as the vastus medialis. So a lot of times referred to as the VMO, which is short for vastus medialis oblique. Now the vastus medialis is the inside quadricep muscle here. And let's take a quick look at the anatomy. This muscle originates off of the shaft of the femur, and it comes down with the other quadricep muscles and forms into the quadricep tendon. The vastus medialis, when it gets restricted, will start causing a lot of tugging and pulling around the knee. It can, it can throw the patella, your kneecap, off of its normal, what we call off of its normal track, and that can affect knee function and, knee, and cause knee pain. Also, the, the um, restriction in the vastus medialis can start putting undue stress and strain on the knee, resulting in a knee pain, sometimes on the inside of the knee, sometimes a, a knee pain that feels like it's really deep into the knee. And it's the result of a buildup of fascial adhesion in the vastus medialis. How does fascial adhesion build up, or what we would commonly refer to as scar tissue? A lot of times it's just a lot of wear and tear. The vastus medialis is, is working a lot when we're exercising, we're going up, uh, when we're walking, when we're jumping, when we're weightlifting. I mean, this muscle is, is working hard and it can build up a lot of adhesion over time. And as it builds up, the muscle will lose its normal elasticity and start getting very um, uh, fibrous in nature, which means it's gonna start tugging and pulling. And because this muscle is connecting into the knee area, where's it gonna tug and pull on the knee, causing knee pain? So I'm gonna go over today with you some fascia release techniques on how we can break up the uh, adhesion in the vastus medialis. So let's get right to it. Okay, so let's go over some techniques on how we're gonna loosen up this VMO muscle, okay? So just to, just so you have an idea, so basically this muscle is coming low through here. That's why a lot of times it's referred to as the teardrop of the quadriceps. It forms like almost like a teardrop shape in here. And see, it basically comes up pretty high through here. So if you follow the VMO up through here, you can see it's coming all the way up into this area here. So we want to make sure when we're working on it, we, we're just not working down here. We follow it up as far as we can, okay? So first thing we want to do if we're working on it. And all the techniques I show you today, if you don't have any fascia release tools to use, you can use your knuckles for most of the stuff I'm gonna show you and your thumb or your fingers. If you have stuff from, like these, these are all items that we have at Oprah Med Health. If you have any of these items, a lot of people that watch these videos have a lot of these items. I'm gonna demonstrate how to use them on this area, okay? So, but don't worry if you don't have anything um, like I said, you can always use your knuckles, you can use your hand, you can grab a lacrosse ball or whatever, okay? First thing we want to do if we want to get in here, we feel this restriction in this muscle. We get out before we get into any deep work, we want to just get the blood flowing for us. You know, fascia release work is never done on a cold, stiff muscle. It's never done first thing in the morning straight out of bed. We always want to make sure we've been moving around a little bit. We've been, you know, getting blood flow into the tissue. And then I, before I start any deep work, I try to really generate blood flow. And I do that on the VMO by just simply taking your knuckles and just going across the, the, the muscle itself, just, just back and forth like this, side to side. If you have a, uh, this is a game changer from Okra Med Health. It's got two textured massage balls on a roller and it has a nice firm handle. I love using this for any type of warm up, whether it's you know chest muscles before a chest workout, but it's a great 
you know, leg, leg muscles, but we can get right in on the VMO with the game changer and just go up and down on the muscles, side to side, and spend about 60 seconds just getting some blood flowing into the tissue, okay? You should actually feel it, it should warm up. You might see it get a little pink in here, which is great. But get the blood flowing in there. Make sure there's plenty of blood flowing so that we can start getting in and doing some deeper work, okay? So spend a little time with the game changer, or like I said, you can use your knuckles. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in on the muscle tissue with, with our thumbs, and I'm gonna kind of follow the, the muscle along the, 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 the perimeter of the muscle, the outside of the muscle here. So if this is the, the, the VMO here, I'm actually gonna just take my, my thumb and I'm gonna push gently like into it like that. So I'm gonna kind of like outline the muscle. Sometimes muscles, when they have adhesions, almost get stuck to other muscles. So I'm gonna separate out the VMO from the other muscles around the area. And the way I'm gonna do that is by simply just taking my thumb, finding the, the outside of the VMO here, and just kinda of gently push through with my thumb all the way up through here. And you can also come from this side and just kinda of push along that VMO muscle, just like that. And work all the way up as far as you can that way. Now, as you're pushing your thumb along the out, outside of this muscle, if you, as you push into it, if you happen to feel kind of like a tender spot or a knot, once you, as you feel that, come back to that area. What I want you to do is actually directly press into it with that thumb and hold it for about 30 seconds, right on that knot that you feel, to get, try to get a release on that knot. So just hold it for about 30 seconds in that spot. Then continue on, follow the muscle all the way around, all the way along the outside, saying that now you're on this spot, maybe again, I feel another knot, just push in nice and deep and hold it for 30 seconds, just like that. So you may feel some knots as you're going, but basically what we wanna do is just use the thumb to kind of separate out that muscle. Make sure the VMO isn't stuck to anything in there, okay? Next we're gonna do is, Take a, uh, preferably a spiky massage ball. This is a Tai Chi Max ball from Okra Med Health. If you don't have a Tai Chi Max ball, get one. <laughs> but if you don't, you can use a lacrosse ball. Obviously the spiky ball is much more effective. It's gonna dig into deeper tissue. We wanna try to dig into this deeper tissue. You won't get the penetration with a smooth ball. But like I said, if that's all you have, use a smooth ball, use a lacrosse ball, use a tennis ball, or you can get in here with your knuckles. I'm gonna use this Tai Chi Max ball. So I've dug around with my thumb. Now I'm gonna take this Tai Chi Max ball and I'm gonna kinda of do some side to side work. I'm gonna start right at that lower part here. I'm gonna put firm pressure and I'm gonna just rub it side to side. And as I go side to side, I'm gonna work my way up that VMO, get right into that area here. Like I said, that VMO is coming all the way up here and then rub all the way back down. Rub all the way up and all the way back down. Nice firm pressure. As I'm coming up and down, once again, if I come across, I'm in the middle of the muscle here and I feel like a knot, just press into the ball and let those, the spiky part of the ball just press in, firm pressure, go to your, your tolerance and just hold it for about 30 seconds of firm pressure where I'm just pressing the ball into that knot. You may find, maybe you find one knot, maybe you find two or three knots, wherever you find the knot, as you're rolling around, then just hold nice firm pressure into that area, okay? Once again, as I mentioned, the area might start getting a little pinkish, a little red. We're getting a lot of blood flow, and that's great because tight muscles usually have poor blood flow. We're gonna generate blood flow, okay? So, we get done. Like I said, you may spend a minute or two with the, the ball just going up and down the muscle just like that. Now we're gonna do a little bit of what we call a pin and stretch technique. So if I was to straighten out the leg, I'm contracting the VMO so it's in a shortened position. When I bend the leg back, it lengthens the muscle. So to, in order to help break up any adhesions in there, we're gonna do what we call a pin and stretch technique. Now, if I don't have a ball, if I was gonna demonstrate it with my thumbs, if I extend out the leg and I, I put my thumbs at the very bottom of that VMO and I push in and pull back in this direction like that, now I'm trapping the tissue under my thumbs. 
From this position, I'm gonna slowly start to bend the knee, flex it back as far as I can, but I'm not letting the muscle go, and I'm gonna bring it back as far as I can. So it's a pin and stretch type of technique. Basically what I'm doing is I'm trapping the tissue under my fingers, and then I'm going from a shortened position to elongate, I'm elongating the muscle, so I'm going from short to long, and that's gonna help pull apart any buildup of adhesions. So I'm gonna straighten out the leg, I put my thumbs at the end of the, the VMO, I push in, I pull back, nice, slow and controlled, hold that pressure, bend it back as far as you can, go back as far as you can, nice, slow and controlled, and then let it come out. And go about five times on that one spot. After you, you've done it about five times, then move the thumbs up, you know, maybe an inch or so. So now you're in a little different part of the VMO, push in, pull back, and again, continue with bending it back, as far as you can and then come back and go five times then move the, the thumbs up another inch again straighten out the leg push in pull back and nice slow and controlled bring the knee back as far as you can now if you have a ball you can do the same thing exactly with the ball take the ball push into the vmo push in pull back with the ball so now you get the spikes in it's going to get a little deeper penetration hold that ball down in position and then bring the, the leg back now using the ball. You're going to feel it a little more intensely with the spiky massage ball than you will with your thumb. But it's the same idea. You're just basically going to find the spot, do it five times, and just keep moving up in the one inch increments and try to come all the way up. Because like I said, you can see this muscle comes all the way up into here. So follow it up, okay? Now, another great way to, uh, another tool you can use, a lot of people that watch my videos have these FF5 massage tools. This is a uh, great tool, the stainless steel tool is a great tool for this type of a technique because what you can do is this nice, the curve on these things fit perfectly on the curve of this muscle and you can extend the leg out and you can get that curve of the tool right at the bottom of the VMO and with the tool what we're going to do is put it at about a 45 degree angle and then we're going to glide the tool up the VMO and as we glide it up we're also going to bring the leg back. So it's a really effective way of breaking up adhesions. You're going to drag it right across, right up the VMO as I stretch out the tissue like that. So we're going from a shortened position, then we're lengthening the muscle, and as we're lengthening the muscle, we're dragging, and this edge will catch any adhesion, and you can feel it. Sometimes it sounds like you can feel like this grittiness of the muscle, and that's the adhesion, and this tool will help break up any of that as you drag it across. If you're using the tool, I would recommend going about eight to 10 glides along um, to do the, to do the uh, fascia release on this. So go about eight or 10 times, just back and forth, just like that, okay? So those are the different techniques. Um, you, as soon as you do it, you can feel it. It feels great, blood's flowing. It, uh, you can feel, usually a lot of times, better motion. It's not gonna solve all the problems. In other words, it may feel okay and you might feel less pain for that day, but the adhesion takes, the adhesions take time to break down. So don't get discouraged you do it one day and the following day your knee still hurts. This is something that has taken time to develop and it's gonna take a little time to fix. So start working those techniques. Uh, you can do them every day, you can go every other day, whatever feels best. You know, if you feel really sore the next day after you worked on it, then skip a day. But you need to do these techniques for several weeks to slowly break up adhesions in the area because some adhesions are going to be deeper than others and it takes time to break them up. So take your time. Don't get discouraged too quickly. Hang in there uh, and keep working at it. Hopefully each week that goes by, your knee is going to start feeling better and better and better. You're going to notice you can, you can you know, do squats a little bit better, lunges a little bit better. So just let pain be your guide, but, but get working on it and uh, with those techniques and best of luck to everybody. Okay, so I hope you find that information helpful and I hope your knee starts feeling better really fast, all right? As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, don't forget there's a link below to check out my new Facebook page called Bring On 60, especially for adults on how to stay healthy and fit. Check out my website, www.okramedhealth.com. We have a full line of fashion release products. Everything we used on today's video is in stock and ready to ship out. We also have some pretty unique exercise equipment on the site, so, so check it all out when you have a chance. If you don't mind, subscribe to my channel, Okra Med Health on YouTube. Questions about exercises or injuries, just leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I do the best I can to get back to everybody. And don't forget, Okra Med Health is here to keep you fit forever.